Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to talk about alpha, beta and gamma radiation in slightly more detail. In the last video I introduced them and told you uh, what they were, how ionizing they were, etc. But in this video we're going to have a look in more detail at each one and how we actually measure uh, radiation. And so that's what we're going to take a look at first. And the way that we actually measure radiation is using a device known as a Geiger tube. All right. There we are, let's put that on the screen. So a Geiger tube. Now, uh, you don't have to know exactly the details of a Geiger tube. You don't have to know. I've just put a diagram there so that it shows you. So if we have our radiation, I'm just drawing it in red here. We have our radiation, whatever that may be, going into your Geiger tube. Now the Geiger tube is going to detect that radiation by the radiation ionizing atoms of gas inside the tube, right? That's why we call um, the radiation in terms of alpha, beta, and gamma, that's why we call all of those things ionizing radiation, because they have the ability to ionize other substances. In this case, it's the gas inside the Geiger tube, and that's exactly how the, ga the, uh, the Geiger tube sorry, detects the radiation itself. But more specifically, if we had a source of radiation, I'm just going to draw it here in green. Let's say we have this, whatever substance that is, Right, this green block, and this is our source of, and sorry, that writing is just terrible. Let's try that again. There we go, so that's our source of radiation, and so that's gonna be emitting either alpha, beta, or gamma, depending on what we're gonna be studying. Now, if we wanna measure exactly how much radiation this source is giving off, the first thing we do is we set up our Geiger tube and we measure the radiation without it, right? So there we go. We measure our radiation without that source of radiation because there's always gonna be some background radiation. And so if we just measure the source and, and plot down the value, that's gonna be the amount of radiation given off by the source, but included in that will also be the amount um, which is just background radiation. And so we don't want that. So what we do is we take that reading first and then we introduce our source. I'll just put it up there so it's a bit more in line, like so. And then we take our reading again. And so the difference between the baseline reading, which was without the source, and the reading with the source is going to tell you the amount of radiation that has been given off by your source. Because that means that we're accounting for the background radiation and therefore it's not going to affect our results. All right. Now what we're actually measuring, what we're getting a result of, so I'm just going to put an arrow over to here. Our reading is called the count rate. All right, the count rate. That basically is the amount of radioactivity or the amount of radiation that's given off by a source. And so that's what we're going to be measuring. All right, now that's not all we're going to do because let's say we measure the count rates from our source of radiation. What we can also do is measure how good other substances are at absorbing radiation. Right, so I'm going to draw that in here in blue. So let's say we have this thin material, whatever that may be. Okay, this is going to be called our absorber. Right, for example, alpha radiation okay, is absorbed very easily, right? Even in the air, alpha radiation is absorbed after about five centimeters in the air. So uh, alpha radiation is not very penetrating, right? We'll come on to that in a bit. But certain materials are better at absorbing radiation than certain other ones. For example, gamma radiation does not get absorbed by air, right? It'll just carry on going through air. So we need, we need a different substance in order to absorb gamma radiation. An example of something which does absorb gamma radiation is lead. And so what this can do, right, what this experiment does is it allows us to see how good a material is at absorbing different types of radiation. Now let me show you that on a diagram. So if I were to, uh, well first what I'm going to do is move this out of the way. So let's say without our absorber, without the absorber, you have a load of radiation, right? I'm just gonna draw these in red lines, okay? A load of radiation 
going into your Geiger tube and your Geiger tube is going to measure the count rate, etc, etc. Okay, let's put our absorber back in the middle. All right, now, the same amount of radiation, okay, is going to be hitting the absorber, right? But let's say that absorber is particularly good at absorbing the radiation. Most of that radiation is not going to make its way through. So you see that on this right-hand side, you have more radiation. On the left-hand side, you have less because the absorber has actually stopped a lot of it from going through, right? And depending on the absorber, it, it could stop all of the radiation going through. Uh, if it's not a very good absorber, it could stop none of it going through. And this allows us to test how good a material is at absorbing that kind of radiation. So, of course, what we're doing is we're measuring the count rate, right? Remember, I said that's what's on the screen. We're measuring the count rate before and after, putting the absorber there, and then we can see how good it is at absorbing that radiation. Okay, so now let's have a look at the actual properties of the different types of radiation. And the first one is penetrating power, right? I'll underline that. Penetrating power basically is talking about what we were just looking at. That is how good is radiation at getting through an absorber, right? How penetrating is it? How how easy is it for, for it to travel through a substance? Okay, and the different types of radiation, so alpha, beta, and gamma, vary in how good they are at penetrating, right? So in the air, okay, I'm just gonna say in the air here in red. Okay, in the air, alpha radiation, remember I already said this, is absorbed in about five centimeters. Okay, so it's absorbed in about five centimeters of air, which means it's not very penetrating at all. Beta is absorbed in about 100 centimeters or one meter. Okay, gamma radiation is not absorbed. Okay, it's not absorbed. So that tells us that uh, if we have a look at penetrating power, penetrating power uh, goes up as we go down here. So alpha radiation is the least penetrating, then beta, and then by far the most penetrating is gamma radiation. All right, but there must be some substances which completely absorb our types of radiation. Otherwise, gamma radiation would just ionize everyone on the planet, uh, and that's not kind of uh, that's not quite the case. So let's say um, absorber. Okay, and by this, I mean what substance could absorb our radiation fully? Okay, and for alpha, obviously air does it within five centimeters, but also thin paper will just absorb all of your alpha radiation, right? Which means that that alpha radiation will not get through a thin sheet of paper. All right, beta. Now, beta is absorbed by aluminium, okay? Aluminium. Okay, so that's obviously a more dense material than paper, aluminium, and it has to be about five millimeters, uh, millimeters in thickness, right? Or lead, which is even denser, okay, and about two millimeters of thickness, right? So very thin sheets of metal will absorb completely beta radiation, okay? Now, uh, gamma radiation will not be absorbed by a very thin sheet of metal, Gamma radiation will, though, be absorbed by lead, but it has to be around about, okay, because this is a not, <clears throat> it's not a complete steadfast rule, but it's around about five centimeters, right? I've already, I've already said lead there. So it's around about five centimeters of lead or uh, concrete, right? Concrete will absorb it as well, but that has to be over one meter thick. Right, so over a meter of concrete is needed to absorb gamma radiation. So you can see again, gamma radiation is by far the most penetrating out of those. All right, and so now we've had a look at the penetrating power of the three. Now let's have a look at ionizing power. Right, ionizing power basically means how ionizing are they? Right, now first of all, I'll just talk you through because. We've got to remember, I'll put this in a different color, that's an alpha particle. Yeah, remember, it looks like that, which means it's made up of two protons and two neutrons. Okay, those two protons give it a charge of plus two, which make it very ionizing, right? You've got more than a, you've got more than a one uh, unit of charge, you've got two units of charge, which make it the most ionizing. Okay, so this one is the most ionizing. All right, now beta, 
if we remember what beta is, okay, zero minus one, that's because it's a high speed electron, right? A beta particle is a high speed electron and an electron still has a charge. It has a minus one charge, right? Minus one is not as great as a two charge, right? A minus two or a plus two, depending on if it's positive or negative. Alpha has a plus two charge and two is greater than one. So alpha is more ionizing, okay? So I'll put it here moderately, okay? Sorry for the handwriting again, moderately ionizing. Okay, now gamma radiation. Gamma radiation is zero, zero. It is an electromagnetic wave. It's not an electron or a proton, okay? So it has no charge. However, it is still ionizing because of the amount of energy it contains, right? Because it's not charged, it is nowhere near as ionizing as the other two. And so I'm gonna say here that it is less ionizing. Okay, finally, if we have all three types of radiation, we can separate them, right? And they are separated based on uh, their charge and their size okay and so what we do is we deflect them by putting them in either a magnetic or an electric field okay so if i come down here then we have deflection in either a magnetic or uh, electric field all right now because based on their charge alpha and beta are going to both be deflected okay so alpha is deflected Okay, and we're talking about magnetic field first here, but it's true for both. So an alpha particle is deflected. Okay, a beta particle is deflected in the opposite direction. Okay, so a beta particle is, defle is deflected, sorry, in the opposite direction to the alpha particle. This is because they're oppositely charged, right? And in a magnetic field, they act in opposite ways, therefore. Okay. Also, one thing you need to know is that the beta particle is deflected more than the alpha. Okay. So it's deflected more. More. Than the alpha. Okay. And you might be wondering why that is. It's because the beta particle is smaller than the alpha particle. It has a lower mass than the alpha particle, right? And therefore, uh, if you think about, if someone threw a tennis ball at you, right, and you put your hand up, you'd be able to palm the tennis ball and make it go in a completely opposite direction, okay? If someone threw a bowling ball at you and you put your hand up and tried to hit it, it wouldn't go very far, right, because it has a higher mass. And so that's basically the same kind of analogy. You can't deflect the larger particle as much because it has a higher mass, right? So it's not going to deflect as much. Now, finally, the gamma particle is not deflected, okay? Reason being, gamma particles do not have a charge, and so therefore they are not deflected, all right, by your magnetic field or your electric field. We'll come on to that now. So an electric field, okay, we'll think an alpha particle, right, I'm just going to write here, is positively charged. It's got a two plus charge. Beta particle has a one minus charge, and a gamma particle has a zero charge, right? And so a plus charge is attracted, yep, yeah, to a negative uh, or to anything that's negative, right? So in an electric field, you have a positive and negative metal plate, right? That's basically how you establish your electric field. And so your positive particle is attracted to the negative uh, plate. Yep. So basically, it's um, attracted to the negative plate. Okay, now the beta particle, this one is obviously it's negatively charged and so it's going to be attracted to the positive plate. Cool, and then lastly, your gamma particle is not charged and so it's not deflected. Okay, when I say attracted to the positive plate, that obviously means it's been deflected from the straight line that it was on to start with. Attracted to the to the positive or the negative plate, they've been deflected away from the normal path. And the gamma is not attracted to either plate, and so it's not deflected. Okay, and so in both cases, the gamma particle is not deflected. The other two are, right? And we can explain why based on their charge and obviously based on their mass, um, which tells you how much they're deflected. Okay, alpha particle deflected less than the beta. All right, I think that's enough, really. So I hope that made sense to you and cleared up uh, the 
uh, the different properties of your alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Okay, in the next video, we're going to have a look at half-lives because this is something that people really find confusing, but it's really not that difficult. But if you didn't understand anything in this video, then please feel free to send me a direct email or post a comment in the box below and I'll be sure to get back to you. But as usual, please do like and subscribe because it does help me out and obviously you get notified when new videos become available. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.